Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Oh, Lord, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for your abundant grace and your mercy. Thank you for your forgiveness. For you came into this world not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And Lord, we thank you that you have called us, the body of Christ, to repent of our sins and to trust in your finished work. That great work that you worked on our behalf when you crushed the power of the enemy. You defeated death, hallelujah. You conquered the grave, hallelujah. And you have risen higher than the highest heavens, hallelujah. And right now you are seated at the power on high, the right hand of the power on high. You have taken your seat because you have finished the work, hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you for that finished work. We thank you for saving us by your precious blood. We thank you for the power of the blood, hallelujah. And we thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit so that we can be ambassadors for your kingdom, so that we can tell the world that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind. And if you come to him by faith, you can live forever. Hallelujah. Lord, continue to give us strength, continue to give us power, continue to give us vision, continue to give us revelation, continue to anoint us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet to declare the glorious riches of our soon coming King and Savior, Jesus Christ. For his name is above all names and there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Except your name, Yeshua HaMashiach. We pray it in your awesome and righteous name, praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Well, thank you for coming back to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Opened, Everything Will Change. And, you know, this came across uh, my path uh, by the uh, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so because this came across my path, you know, he told me to make a video about it. And so we're going to talk about what uh, this man who you know is the Pope. Uh, and what he said a couple days ago, and I want to go over this article because the Pope, he continues to be a, a blasphemer. He continues to be uh, antichrist to the core. He continues to spout out uh, hateful things that do not build up the church, but in fact, he seeks to destroy the church. And uh, this is his latest uh, blasphemous statement. And so let's read this article from Life site news. I'm going to read about f four or five paragraphs so you understand what uh, this man has just said a couple days ago. So the title is Pope Francis tells teens they are not a disciple of Jesus if they try to convert non believers. December 23rd, 2019. In an apparent repudiation of the Great Commission to baptize and teach all nations, Pope Francis has recently told a group of high school students in Rome that speech should never be used in order to convince a non-believer of the truths of the Catholic faith. Citing a fictional 11th century account of an episode of forced conversion attributed to the 8th century emperor Charlemagne, Pope Francis implied that the belief that positive efforts should be made to convert non-Christians to the gospel through argument entails coercion to the faith. The Pope's remarks came during a visit with students of Rome's Pilo Albertilli Classical Secondary School on Friday, December 20th. According to Avenir, the official newspaper of the Italian Bishops' Conference, school administrators have sought to help students understand the many issues involved in the inclusion of the thousands of those arriving in Italy who are reportedly fleeing war, poverty, and famine. The Pope's visit preceded a December 21st day-long series at the school on migration. Describing the fictional passage that recounts the forced conversion of Muslims in the Song of Roland, he said, This happened in history. What happened here to me is shameful because it is a story of forced conversion, of disrespect for the dignity of the person. 
asked by a schoolboy how one ought to give a reason for one's own faith, the Pope replied, with a non-believer, the last thing I have to do is try to convince him. Never. The last thing I have to do is talk. <laughs> I have to live in accordance with my faith. A theologian whom LifeSight consulted said that although Charlemagne was guilty of attempting forced conversion, this occurred in Saxony and not in Islamic Spain. And he was rebuked for this by leading churchmen of the day, including his advisor, Alusin. Nor has the church, as Pope Francis seems to imply, ever permitted forced conversion. The Second Vatican Council concedes that some individual Christians have behaved in an unacceptable manner. But the doctrine of the church that no one is to be coerced into the faith has always stood firm. Pope Francis is strident in his opposition to the verbal communication of Christianity. And here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Look at what he said. I have to live in accordance with my faith, and it will be my testimony that will awaken the curiosity of the other who says, but why do you do this? And that's where I can talk. Look at this. Look at this. Look what he says right here. But listen, never, ever advance the gospel through proselytism. If someone says he is a disciple of Jesus and comes to you with proselytism, he is not a disciple of Jesus. We shouldn't proselytize. The church does not grow from proselytizing. So I'm going to end it right there, but I'll, I'll, I'll post the link to this article that you can read at your own leisure. So right there, you, you heard it from the dragon's mouth himself. Uh, right here, uh, this tells me that, you know, uh, he never read what happened in Acts chapter 2 when Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and preached a message to Jews who were assembled in Jerusalem and over and 3,000 of them were saved. That sounds a lot like proselytization to me. I guess he never also read Acts chapter 17 where uh, Paul the Apostle preached probably one, uh, probably one of the greatest sermons ever uh, on Mars Hill where he preached about the unknown God and he made him known. His, his name is Jesus Christ to people who were all the day long looking to hear some new thing. And yet here comes Paul the Apostle proselytizing about the gospel of Jesus Christ on Mars Hill. So I guess, I guess this man uh, doesn't read the Bible, or if he does, he absolutely abhors it, which I believe he does, because everything that comes out of his mouth is uh, coming from a forked tongue uh, and is blasphemous to the core. Uh, he said, well, what were some of the things he said before? He said that Jesus Christ failed. Uh, he failed at the cross. That's why he, that's why he's painting it. That's why he's uh, over here uh, kissing this idol with Jesus Christ still on the cross. Uh, an, an image of Jesus Christ still on the cross. Look at him. He, this man says that Jesus Christ, he failed on the cross. And this is the representation of what the average person in the world believes a Christian is. The Pope. The average person out there in the world believes that the Pope is a representation of what it is to be a Christian. So when uh, the Pope comes on the record speaking to the youth just a couple days ago and says that they are never, ever, look at, look at what he says, never, ever to advance the gospel through proselytism. That just goes in the, that, that, that just exit out uh, uh, Matthew 28, 16 through 20, where Jesus Christ said specifically before he ascended back to heaven, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. So the Pope who, 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 who says never ever to advance the gospel through apostolicism says that if you do, if you do, you are not a disciple of Jesus. This is, this is what the leader of the Catholic church is now saying. I mean, how long is the laundry list of blasphemous things that this man has said? He, he, he is destroying the church from the inside out. And 
what he's doing is paving the way. And, you know, he's just the latest of, of the popes. We know the Catholic Church has a long and, and bloody history. Uh, and it's apostate uh, to the nth degree. Uh, but this man right here, he's setting the stage. He's setting the stage for what we read about in the Bible, you see, because he's already saying, he's already prepping the world that, you know, uh, he's already prepping the world from someone who claims to be the spokesperson, the spokesperson for Christianity, that if someone tells you about Jesus, they're not really a true disciple of Jesus. If someone comes to you proselytizing, uh, they're not really a true believer. So what he's really doing is he's slandering people like you and me. He's slandering the true believers. He's slandering those of us who are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. He's slandering those who are advancing the gospel through apostolicism. That's how the gospel has reached to the four corners of the world. I mean, has this man ever read the book of Acts? I don't under. Has he even read the gospels? I'm. I, has he even read Genesis chapter one verse one? I don't know who. He 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 just. It, it's it's. I mean I mean there's not enough words to describe the blasphemy that has come out of Pope Francis's mouth, and yet. This man is looked at by the average person in the world who knows no better, that this is what a Christian is supposed to be. Uh, you know, uh, when people think of Christians, they think of Catholics and the Pope. The average person, they don't think of, of true believers like you and me. Uh, people who are truly born again, people who have the Holy Spirit, and we have an abiding relationship uh, with the Father through the Son of God by faith in Jesus Christ. When people think about Christianity, they think about the Pope, and what came from his mouth is a stepping stone to what's coming when we get out of here. You see, because when we get out of here, my friends, at the time of the rapture, you see, the rapture is a judgment, okay? You see, it's a blessing and a curse, because remember, God says that when uh, that day comes, there's going to come a curse that devours the earth, according to Isaiah chapter 24. Okay, so, uh, but remember, uh, in one hand is blessing and in one hand is cursing. And so, um, in his right hand, hallelujah, in his right hand will be the blessing for us, hallelujah, because we're going to be caught up. We're going to be caught up. The sheep are going to be caught up. We're going to be caught up to the Father's house when the rapture happens, which is going to be the first event that kicks off the day of the Lord. And uh, we're going to be saved out of the time of trouble. But for everyone who's left behind, like this man, if he's not dead already, but for everyone who's left behind, like this man and everyone who follows what he says, as well as all the world that's wicked, everyone who does not have an abiding relationship with Jesus Christ, who doesn't have oil in their lamp, everyone who isn't born again, everyone who's left behind, the rapture is a judgment. The rapture is a judgment. It is a judgment because when the rapture happens and you're left behind, you are now going to be devoured by the curse. Okay. And the curse is the time of Jacob's trouble. The curse is the time of Jacob's trouble. And God goes at length to describe the conditions for everyone who is left behind in that day. And Amos is one of the main books that talks about how uh, the world will be at that time. And in Amos chapter 6, it picks up right when the cloudy day ends, right when the rapture happens, the four winds are released, World War III happens, Gog and Magog, the fall of Babylon, uh, Christ comes on the clouds, the whole heavens are shaking, the whole earth shakes, Satan and all of his minions are kicked down to the ground, and now uh, once the dust settles, this is where we pick up in Amos chapter 6, and uh, is, this is a woe to the complacent in Zion. These are for those who cried peace and safety. But when people say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. That's why the first verse says, woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations to whom the house of Israel came. Okay, so this is at a time 
when this woe comes, when people are at ease, when the Bible puts it in the New Testament as peace and safety, okay, sudden destruction is going to come, okay, sudden destruction is going to come because these people who are saying peace and safety, uh, Amos calls them out in verse 3 and says that they have put far away the evil day. You that put far away the evil day and caused the seed of violence to come near. People don't believe that the day of judgment is coming. People don't believe that God is about to come down on the clouds. People say, well, that's a time far away. Right now, we have peace and safety. Right now, we can eat and drink and be merry because the day of the Lord is far away. You see? But God is going to come suddenly. He's going to come suddenly. And when he gets down here to verses 8 through 11, look what happens for everyone who's left behind, who are caught up in the judgment of the rapture. Look at this. Verse 8. The Lord God has sworn by himself, saith the Lord God of hosts, I abhor the excellency of Jacob and hate his palaces. Therefore will I deliver up the city with all that is therein. Okay. Remember, the city is going to be trampled down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. The Antichrist is coming. Okay. The fierce king is coming. Okay. Uh, because uh, the time of the end is the time of Jacob's trouble. And look what happens. This picks up right here in verse 9, right when uh, the rapture comes and everything that I already said happens. Okay. The cloudy day judgment, when it all begins. This is when the dust settles. Okay, and the survivors are left behind on the earth. Verse 9, and it shall come to pass if there remain ten men in one house that they shall die. Okay, it's a terrible day, my friends. God says he's going to make man more red, even than the golden wedge of Ophel. He says that the earth will be burned and few men left. Okay, dead bodies in Every place, verse 10, and a man's uncle shall take him up and he that burneth him to bring out the bones out of the house and shall say unto him that is by the size of the house, is there yet any with you? And he shall say, no, then shall he say, hold your tongue for we may not make mention of the name of the Lord. You see this? This is when the cleanup crews are going around searching for survivors. This is uh, spoken about in Ezekiel with the battle of Gog and Magog when they're doing the cleanup for seven months looking for dead bones. This goes hand in hand with verse 10 of Amos chapter 6. People are going from house to house looking for survivors. And when people find survivors and people ask, is there anyone else with you? And they say, no, okay? There's few people left, okay? The whole earth is going to be utterly shaken, utterly broken down. One-fourth of all the world is going to die on the cloudy day, according to the fourth seal, hallelujah. And what happens? Once the survivors are found out, what, what, what do the survivors say to those who are left behind? Then shall he say, hold your tongue, for we may not make mention of the name of of the Lord. You can't even say the name of the Lord during the cloudy day. Okay. You can't even say the name of the Lord during the time of Jacob's trouble. We may not make mention of the name of the Lord. Pope Francis is already telling people today when there is peace and safety, when uh, we are at a time of complacency because the day of the Lord has not begun yet. Pope Francis is already telling people, do not say the name of Jesus. Don't you ever, never, ever advance the gospel through speaking about Jesus. This is what he's saying. He's saying, he's saying don't you dare say the name of Jesus to a Muslim. Don't you dare say the name of Jesus to an atheist. Don't you dare say the name of Jesus to a Christian scientist. Don't you dare say the name of Jesus to a Buddhist. This is what he's saying, my friends. This is what this man is saying. This is what the dragon is speaking through him right now. The dragon is speaking through his lips right now and saying, to people who follow him, and there's what? Over a billion of them. There's over a billion Catholics 
who follow what he says. He's saying to the youth, those who are most impressionable, when he first gave it, he says, don't you ever, look at this, but listen, never, ever, he, 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 you talk about a double emphatic, a double emphatic declaration. He said, never, ever, <laughs> can you imagine the gall? Can you imagine the audacity? Can you imagine the hatred in his heart? Okay. You talk about the mouth of the serpent. He says, never, ever advance the gospel through proselytism. If someone says he is a disciple of Jesus and comes to you with proselytism, he is not a disciple of Jesus. We shouldn't proselytize. The church does not grow from proselytizing. The devil is a lie. <laughs> the devil is a lie. Okay. And look at what's already happening, my friends. Imagine when this day comes, when people are left behind, when they're looking for the survivors of the cloudy day, when God has shaken everything up, when the whole world is made into a desolate wilderness. And people are going from house to house looking for survivors. And for those who are foolish, the foolish virgins, those who didn't have oil in their lamps, when they know they messed up, when they know they messed up, they're going to say, hold your tongue, for we may not make mention of the name of the Lord, because that fifth seal is going to come quick, fast, and in a hurry. That fifth seal is going to come quick, fast, and in a hurry for those who played God for a fool, for those who were foolish, for those who were foolish, they're going to be found out. They're going to be found out and they're going to be killed. They're going to be found out and they're going to be killed. Okay. Anyone who says the name of Jesus. Anyone who says the name of the Lord, anyone who says the name of the Lord will be slaughtered. Burn them at the stake. Okay, but even worse than that, because God says it's the worst time in human history. We already had burnings at the stake before in times past, which was terrible. But God says nothing compares to the time of Jacob's trouble. Nothing compares to the time of Jacob's trouble because guess who is on the earth? Okay, guess who is on the earth? There's no more hiding behind the scenes in that day. Oh, no. There's no more walking about in the shadows in that day. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's out and about now, okay? Him and all his minions. Him and all the fallen angels are on the earth, and they will find out the foolish virgins. And they will hunt them down and kill them. Okay. The fifth seal tells us that. The fifth seal tells us that. You can't say the name of Jesus. No. You cannot say the name of Jesus in the day of the Lord. It's right here in the Bible. Hold your tongue for we may not make mention of the name of the Lord. Can't say his name. Oh, no. You can't say his name. No, you cannot say the name of Jesus. And look, Pope Francis is already prepping the world. He's already prepping the world. He's already prepping the world. You see, that's why the rapture is a judgment again. You see, the rapture is a judgment. And because the rapture is a judgment, Second Thessalonians puts it oh so beautifully because it contrasts those who are caught up when the restrainer is removed against those who are left behind. Because once the restrainer is removed, once the restrainer is removed, hallelujah, once the Holy Spirit is taken out of the world at the time of the rapture, when he takes us up into the Father's house, when Jesus Christ comes down on the clouds, hallelujah, that wicked one will be revealed. You see, and verse 7 of Second Thessalonians tells us, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. 
That's the rapture. The Holy Spirit is the restraining work right now. But once the restrainer is taken out of the way, what happens? Once the blessing comes, we're taken out into the Father's house. The blessing comes, hallelujah. Everyone who is in Christ, we're taken out of the way. The judgment comes because everyone who is left behind will then see the wicked one. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. It's a terrible day, my friends. It's a terrible day. It's a terrible day. Look at what the Apostle Paul tells us by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. When that wicked one is revealed, God sends that strong delusion, which is a lie, because the lie is Satan who is empowering the wicked one. And you think you're going to be able to say the name of the Lord in that day? No, no. You will not be able to say the name of the Lord and live. No. You, you can say the name of the Lord, and I pray that you do if you're left behind. I pray that you do because whosoever will call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. We'll be saved. Okay, because you have to call on the name of Jesus if you want, if you want salvation. You can't deny his name. That's the patience of the saints. You have to stand strong. Hallelujah. You see, but in that day, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you your life if you're left behind as a foolish virgin. You should have been out of here with the blessing of the rapture. You should have been out of here when the restrainer took us to meet King Jesus in the air as we all assembled in the clouds. You should have been out of here at that moment in time. You should have been caught up in the blessed hope. You should have been caught up in the blessing. You should have been a wise virgin that had oil in your lamp. You should have been out of here. Because you are supposed to be in the Father's house to see the crowning of the King. Hallelujah. You're supposed to be in the Father's house to be consecrated for our eternal priesthood. Hallelujah. You're supposed to be in the Father's house. For the marriage supper of the Lamb, hallelujah. You're supposed to be in the Father's house under the chupa, hallelujah. For the wedding, my friend. You're not supposed to be on the earth. You're not supposed to be on the earth. The earth at that time is the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not the time of the church's trouble. The true church, the true body of Christ, the wise virgins, we're out of here before that wicked one is revealed. Hallelujah. We're out of here before the wicked one is revealed. We're out of here before the wicked one is revealed. We're looking for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're looking for that blessed hope. Hallelujah. We're looking for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Hallelujah. We're looking for him, my friends. That's why the rapture is a blessing for everyone who's ready. But if you're not ready, if you continue to sleep and slumber, if you continue to march to the beat of this guy's drum, if you continue to listen to man and what he tells you to do, if you continue to listen uh, to this forked tongue and 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 uh, and people of his ilk, okay, he's a, he's one of many false prophets and false teachers. He might even be 
the false prophet. I don't know. I'm not looking for him. I don't care who he is because I'm not going to be around to see him. Glory. Hallelujah. The rapture happens before the wicked one is revealed. Both of them. Okay, because it's a two-headed monster. It's the Antichrist and the false prophet. Oh, it's a terrible day. Okay. It's a two-headed monster. It's a three-headed snake. Oh, it's the unholy trinity. Oh, my goodness. What a terrible day. It's the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the dragon. It's a three-headed snake, my friends. It's a three-headed snake, a three-headed hydra. Oh, my goodness. It's a terrible day. You don't want to be around to see it. He's already prepping the world. He's already prepping the world that you can't even say the name of Jesus right now and proselytize. You think you're going to be able to proselytize in the cloudy and dark day in the time of Jacob's trouble? No, 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 no. If you say the name of Jesus, you will die. End of discussion. Okay. You might be one out of, I don't even know the odds. I don't even want to know the odds, okay? I don't, I don't know what the odds are. I don't really care because I'm not going to be around to find out. I'm going to be in the Father's house. Praise his holy name. Thank you, King Jesus. Hallelujah. But if you want to roll the dice, my goodness, you can gamble with God. Oh, he's a good God. He, he gave us free will. You can gamble with God. And if you want to roll the dice, you want to hunker down, you want to play games, you want to juke and jive, you want to roll the dice <laughs> and think that you can outsmart God, hey, well, be my guest. And if God somehow allows you to survive the initial uh, uh, cloudy day judgment of the rapture and you go through the seven-year tribulation thinking that you can skirt your way all the way to the time of the end, hey, that's, I, hey, <laughs> if that's you, hey, you, it's your own free will, but I'm telling you, it's a 99.9% .9 chance that you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it to the end without dying. You're not going to make it to the end without dying. Your best bet, your best bet right now, right here, is to get right with Jesus. And it's a 100% guarantee that you will be caught up at the time of the rapture. And you will escape the time of Jacob's trouble. You will escape the time of the day of the Lord. Because the restrainer has to be removed first. The restrainer has to be taken out of the way first. And verse 8 tells us, and then shall that wicked be revealed. The rapture has to happen first. The rapture has to happen first. Don't let anyone lie to you anymore. The rapture has to happen first. Do not let anyone lie to you anymore. The rapture must take place before. All of the trouble begins. And so the choice is yours, my friends. Will you stand strong in the faith? Will you continue to preach out loud and tell people about Jesus? Or will you follow the edicts of man? Uh, follow the edicts of uh, men's uh, doctrines, like the Pope, who says that you're not even supposed to proselytize anymore. Can you even imagine? Can you even imagine? You see, Amos, oh, I, I forgot to go over to some more scriptures, but let me just, you know, Amos just talks so much about the time of the day of the Lord and what it's going to be like during the time when people are left behind. And Amos chapter five, just highlighting one verse, verse 13, God says, therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. He's talking about the people who are left behind, those who will come to faith. You got to be quiet during that time. You got to be quiet during that time because it's an evil time. God says everyone is like a, a briar and a thorn bush. The best of them is as a briar and a thorn bush. God says you can't even trust the one who lays in your own bed at that time. 
Okay, you can't even trust your own wife or, or husband. You can't even trust anyone at that time because everyone will be out for their own interest. Because remember, it's the cloudy day judgments of the end times. Food will be scarce. Water will be scarce. The good times will no longer be rolling in. Okay, it's, it's every man for himself. Think of the book of Eli, if, as if you've if you ever seen that movie. I mean, there are just so many uh, Hollywood programming movies that have tried to depict it. You know, but just, just imagine the most terrible time in human history when, you know, everyone is out for themselves. No one, there's no love. God says that the love of many will grow cold. And we've already seen that today in these last 2,000 years since Jesus Christ has risen. Just look at how evil people are right now. But yet, the restrainer is still here restraining the full brunt of evil taking over everything. You can't even imagine when the restrainer is removed. When there's no restraint, when the restrainer is taken out of the way, people will do whatever they want to do without regard for anyone except their own flesh. Okay, it's a terrible time. It's a terrible time. It's a terrible time. Look at this, the coming judgment. Let me just read this and I'm going to read one more verse and I'll be done. Verse 16, therefore the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord saith thus, wailing shall be in all streets. <laughs> Whatever street you in, there's going to be wailing. I don't care where you're at. I don't care if you're in Timbuktu. I don't care if you're in Jakarta, Indonesia. I don't care if you're in Perth, Australia. I don't care if you're in Wuhan, China. I don't care if you're in Lisbon, Portugal. I don't care if you're in uh, Kiev or Moscow. I don't care if you're in the Jordan Valley. I don't care what street you're in. Jesus Christ says there shall be wailing in all streets. <laughs> and they shall say in all the highways. Alas, alas, and they shall call the husbandmen to mourning, and such as are skillful of lamentation to wailing. And in all vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. It's God who's coming. <laughs> it's God who's coming down on the clouds. Oh, you, you think you ain't going to wail. <laughs> oh, 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 you Superman, huh? Okay. Oh, you think that you ain't going to wail when God himself comes down upon the clouds and he passes from east to west. <laughs> and he brings out his sword and he cuts from the south to the north. Oh, <laughs> you think you ain't going to wail. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Bible tells me different. The Bible says that the terror will be so frightful when God passes through. God says that the terror will be so frightful. Look at the sixth seal. That mankind will want boulders and rocks, even the mountains, to fall on them. The, the presence of God and his terrible judgment when he comes down on the clouds will be so terrifying. It will be so horrific. It will be so dreadful that people would rather have a mountain to fall on them instead of facing the living God. <laughs> and of course, who can stand before him? You better ask a rock to fall on you. You better ask a rock to fall on you. Okay. Who can stand before his presence? He's God. Hallelujah. <laughs> no wonder there's going to be wailing in all streets. It's God who's coming. Verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. 
as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it. It's a terrible day, my friends. It's a terrible day. Amos chapter 8, then I'm done. Here comes the rapture first. Verse 1, thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. We just read in Amos chapter 5 when the Lord passes by. That's the cloudy day. That's when he comes down on the clouds. And when he comes down on the clouds, there's going to be a rapture, the basket of summer fruit. There's a harvest. There's a harvest. There's a harvest. There's a blessing that comes first. And then the Lord passes through and the curse begins. And what happens for everyone who's left behind? Verse 3. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I don't know how many more verses I can bring up, but I could keep on going. But hey, you get the gist. You get the gist. You don't want to be around when the judgment comes, my friends. So we have to rebuke what man says. We rebuke what Pope Francis decrees. We rebuke what he decrees. And we stand upon what the Bible says. And therefore, let God be true and every man a liar. Therefore, Jesus Christ has not failed at the cross. Jesus Christ has won the victory, hallelujah. And Jesus Christ has commanded us to go forth into all nations and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to obey everything that he has commanded, hallelujah. We are to make disciples of all nations, hallelujah. We are to go out and tell others because we have the ministry of reconciliation. That's the charge of the Christian. We are ambassadors for Christ. This is a precious gift to be in his service. The audacity of this man, my goodness, you talk about a blasphemer. You talk about a blasphemer. My goodness, the audacity of Pope Francis to say that the church has never succeeded in proselytizing. What Bible has he read? He's read the Serpent's Handbook, if you ask me. Because he ain't reading the Bible that I know. He ain't reading the Bible that you read. Oh, no. I don't know what, I don't know what toolkit he's working out of. But he ain't working out of the toolkit of the Holy Ghost. I don't know what type of toolkit he got. His kit ain't the same kit that I got because the kit that I got is a kit that says, go and tell, hallelujah. Go and shout it upon the rooftops. God says, cry aloud and spare not, hallelujah. God says, give him no rest until he make Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. He says, lift up your voice like a trumpet, hallelujah. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that I will. And I pray that you will too. And I pray that this teaching was edifying and that you would share the word with others because surely King Jesus comes quickly. I love you. Maranatha. Amen.